Good morning. Uh, today is January the 11th. Happy to be here this morning. Uh, it's a little little dark and rainy outside and cold, and I will admit um, I fell back asleep after my phone call this morning. It's a good it's a good morning to sleep rather than to get up. So I apologize for being a little bit late. Uh, we want to go over several things. The number one part of this is obviously the new event um, restrictions due to COVID-19 that we have. In response to a rising number of cases and hospitalizations, we have implemented new restrictions and guidelines for city permit events. Uh, the restrictions are as follows. The city of Pensacola will not issue new permits for outdoor events and city venues. This will remain in effect through February 28th and will be reevaluated. Uh, on that time basis with the current conditions of COVID-19. Events already issued, um, they've been issued a permit and currently in permitting process between now and February 28th, located outdoor city venues will be allowed with the following restrictions. No more than 100 in attendance, uh, must show control of crowd congestion and follow CDC guidelines, including wearing face coverings and practice social distancing. Outdoor markets are allowed to continue uh, above the 100% cap, but it, but they must show crowd congestion and follow CDC guidelines. Indoor events at City of Pensacola venues are limited to 25% capacity or less uh, with COVID-19 protocols in place, including wearing face covers, practicing um, social distancing. Indoor events also require mayoral approval, and this will remain in effect until uh, February 28th. These restrictions only apply to City of Pensacola permitted events at city venues. They do not apply uh, to private events. Uh, private events are welcome to do uh, those things as they fit within the state's guidelines. Uh, city event, uh, city will work with event organizers to reschedule any events as needed. Uh, updates to the city of Pensacola services for COVID-19 uh, due to an increase of, of uh, cases and hospitalizations. Um, uh, many of our services will be tr transitioning to online or phone only uh, Monday uh, today, Monday, January 11th until further notice in order to minimize risk or exposure uh, to COVID-19. Some city services may be limited, but we appreciate the public's patience during this time. Again, both uh, both uh, the event as well as the city services really are following where we were this summer. Uh, the change includes the closure of City Hall uh, to public to further notice. City staff will continue to be available via phone or email with staff working remotely where feasible. Effective today, uh, January 11th, public participation, city council meetings and other boards will be done virtually only. Meetings will not be open to the public to attend in person. For information about virtual participation, uh, please refer to each meeting notice and meeting agenda. Uh, for more information um, and a list of contact information for city services, please visit cityofpensacola.com. Again, this is very similar to where we were on all of these things in the summer. Um, we found them to be successful in helping us uh, curb things. So again, we are we are looking. Uh, we want to continue to keep as many private things open and going. Uh, so we do not want the public uh, to become a, uh, a contributor. And so for these reasons, we will be having these closures. Uh, Martin Luther Day, uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Day closure, sanitation collection schedule changes. Uh, the following uh, City of Pensacola offices and facilities will be closed next Monday, which is January 18th, in observance of Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Um, City of Pensacola Administrative Offices, City of City Hall, and City of Pensacola Community Resource Centers. The exceptions are Osceola Golf Course and Roger Scott Tennis Center will be open for regular business hours. Uh, sanitation services, all sanitation customers will experience a change next week. Uh, if you're Monday, you'll go to Tuesday. Tuesday, you'll go to win, uh, Wednesday, Wednesday to Thursday, and Thursday to Friday. So everybody will shift one day back. Uh, Monday, we will be off. Uh, so everyone's uh, garbage will change next week by one day. Um, again, this will be this applies to your garbage recycling and yard pickup waste. Also, there will be no press conference uh, next week. Um, so again, these are some of the things um, that are going on uh, with the with with the holiday next week. Um, uh, the mayor's neighborhood cleanup is continuing to uh, schedules now online at cityofpensacola.com. Uh, though the mayor's neighborhood cleanup program, all neighborhoods have a cleanup once a year. Uh, we will begin the first one, uh, which I think is the downtown area. Uh, first cleanup of the year is scheduled for Saturday, January 30th in downtown, including portions of, of surrounding neighborhoods. Please view the map at our website to confirm whether you're uh, in the cleanup area. Residents will also receive a notice in the mail of their cleanup date. 
Uh, as far as COVID, we uh, we continue to show a fairly significant um, positivity uh, for January 9th. We were 16.1%. Uh, this follows the 16.45, uh, 15.04, and 14.86 for the three prior days. Uh, COVID-19 hospitalizations on the 10th, we had 258, uh, which, uh, which on the 6th, we had 268, 7th and 8th, 265, the 9th, we had 270, and then yesterday we were down uh, 258. I've seen Sacred Heart has come in this morning. They are, they are level, so I wait for the other two to see where we are uh, today. But again, um, uh, we, all of those since the beginning of the year have been over our, our record of last year. Uh, this is why we're implementing many of the things that we talked to you about at the very beginning. Uh, please continue to take simple ste steps to protect yourself and others from COVID-19, including wearing a mask, washing your hands. And remember, the city's mask ordinance is still in effect um, through the February 25th face coverings to be worn inside buildings within the city limits. Um, and again, we are still working with all of our partners um, on the vaccines. Uh, that is really an initiative carried out through the state of Florida, through uh, through the Department of Health. They are certainly working, and we are working with the Scambia County Emergency Service. At this particular time, the hospitals are 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 looking to uh, continue the um, um, putting forward the uh, the sites um, and continuing to to man those sites and continuing to vac uh, vaccinate individuals. Uh, we have contributed. We have made them aware of a number of sites that we could do. If sufficient supply becomes available, you will see us move to other things. But at this time, we ask for your patience as they're continuing to work through uh, really the, the bigger issue is vaccine supply. But I know many people out there have appointments. And the good news is we have vaccines here in Escambia County, and we are working through uh, to make that happen. And, and as we get more available, I'm sure you'll see more roll out. Continue to watch what's going on because much like everything else, I'm sure this will what what's going on today will not be the way it's done as we move forward. But what we are telling you today, uh, continue to work with the Department of Health, uh, Scambia uh, Emergency Services, and and we will we will update you if any changes happen in locations. Otherwise, we ask all of you that that have um, appointments, please take advantage of those and it's good to see the numbers. One of the reasons that you see us going through the 28th is uh, today we have a, uh, a scheduled two o'clock phone conference with hospitals. The hospitals have told us very clearly that they don't expect to see a, a the vaccines making a serious change in numbers um, until we can get uh, to probably the first of March. Um, so for that reason, that's why we thought we would institute uh, many of the uh, measures that we took uh, that we announced earlier really just bringing us back to the same place we were uh, through throughout much of the summer um, and, and so that we were there. Uh, we have several things happening this week. Um, Casey, do you have the um, do you have that map that Brian sent us uh, the picture of the new Hitsman Park as we we're looking at that? Just just give me a minute and I'll pull it up. OK. Um, we are continuing to work and trying to finalize the uh, that 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 construction is happening and moving forward and it's continuing to do so. There are some details um, that we continue to work with um, uh, some of the council members. We certainly appreciate and understand um, Councilwoman Brayer is is particularly um, uh, this is important to her. It's in our district and we appreciate that. But there are some things uh, that we wanted to show you with reasons why. Uh, we have a couple of things. She's been very insistent and we understand and we're trying to work with her that, um, that 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 one of the three fields, there were two fields always there. They were always gated. Uh, the third field we're trying to work um, so that there is not, it's not fully um, gated and fenced and has open access for the public to be able to utilize. Uh, that we are, we've never uh, disagreed and we're continuing to work. Um, I think if you can see this and if you have a chance to look in front of you, uh, you can see the two fields that are on the left. Um, those two fields will be fenced um, and, and they will be fenced off as you can see. Uh, the third field, as you can see to the east, uh, north is the top, south is the bottom. Uh, on the west, uh, they're fenced, but on the east, as you can see that third field, um, it is wide open, uh, is intended to be wide open. Um, I think we've been working through a couple of things at looking at it, uh, it not doing any fence. My problem uh, that I see uh, in particular is the walking track that goes along the south boundary. 
Uh, we think this will be a great initiative that uh, that will be enjoyed uh, by all of those in the scenic heights area. We have walking paths at most all of our uh, our parks and they're well utilized by all ages and certainly a lot of our senior members certainly enjoy it. Uh, my challenge was, uh, as you can see, it walks be behind the goals, the soccer goals. Uh, I think that's a, there's a there's a there's a potential hazard with people kicking balls there, which is why you see the fence extended all the way around uh, the south field uh, there all the way through. Uh, granted, anybody can kick a ball any direction, but more often than not, there be there people are going to be kicking in the direction of north and south. With the concession stand, we had also moved the one to the north. I'm still working with Councilwoman Barrera. We'll see what we can do, but I insist. Uh, I wanted to show all of you in the press to see what what's out there. Um, and again, uh, the challenge when you have that walking path there, uh, I do not want anybody, especially our seniors walking to be potentially kicked by a ball or hit or some other way uh, there, which is why I believe the fence is absolutely necessary on the south end. I, I look at the same thing at the north end. Uh, we're certainly still working with that, but as you can see, the field has zero fence on the east side, so it is open, accessible, and ready to be used by whoever can get there. Uh, we want them to utilize it. We we are excited, and we're, we'll, we'll look forward to seeing what the fields uh, will be like as we move forward. So um, we are very happy uh, and looking forward uh, to getting this project off the ground and uh, should be hopefully this spring that um, we should be putting sod out there and, and, and getting ready to play. Uh, but again, I, I wanted to show you all what we were looking at with the challenge there with the fence on the south line and what we needed to do. All right, um, Casey, if you could bring back to me, I think one of the other things that is happening uh, this week is uh, there's there is a meeting uh, for the council to begin some things and looking at budget. Um, one of the things that we wanted uh, to look at is is there were many things the councils asked us uh, about and we've planned in initiatives within that uh, unallocated fund balance that was talked about last year. Um, there are several things that, that the council has been asking us. One of them is uh, is dealing with homelessness assistance. Um, we have the opportunity here that we never have had uh, to bring forward and you heard Councilwoman Myers uh, make several comments that we've never as a city and her tenure as being here uh, over 10 years have dedicated funding for homelessness. Um, again, from our standpoint, we hope to uh, change that and we have put forward an initiative to the council uh, that $200,000 be set aside. Uh, we hope at this particular time that that money could be utilized to partner with the county. Uh, we've talked about that for a while. Um, but the county, the city's been talking about that. Now's a chance for us to put sort of uh, our, our money or where our where our commitments are, uh, and go to the county and see if we can do something. We would love to see uh, much of the way that we talked about at Leon County that phase one um, in some kind of a um, in some kind of a center uh, that uh, a day center that allows people to come in, all the different groups to access us to have the computer records really begin that first phase. I am excited. I know that Commissioner Bender and um, and Janice Gilly are going to be Administrator Gilly are going to be going to Tallahassee on the 28th of this month. Uh, they are going to see the same thing I did in in um, in uh, I guess back in December. They're going to be seeing the same things that I saw in Tallahassee, uh, Leon County, and and I'm hoping that when they see that and they see the city is committed to 200,000, that they will find a way to participate with us and help resolve some of the issues and for the first time really put some initiatives forward uh, that begin to deal with some of our homelessness and give those opportunities there. Um, if the if the if the county does not step forward, we'll 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 develop a plan as we move forward. But from our standpoint, we believe that it is important for us to do that. The council has asked about that and the mayor's office has stepped up and put uh, $200,000 request and sending that to council before their meeting on Wednesday. Um, one of the other things that has been uh, also Councilman Myers has asked about the last meeting was what are we going to do with the monument now that it's been taken down? It will at some point have to be re-erected and we will need some funding for those things. We have put $150,000 in there uh, for that. Um, so again, we do expect we had nowhere else in our funding uh, that that would happen. So at this particular time uh, that is placed in there and the council, we're looking for them to 
uh, move that forward and we would appreciate it and that will begin to, to allow us to begin to plan as, as far as where that comes from. I know that's been very uh, uh, something for Councilwoman Meyer, so I hope she will be uh, supportive of that as we move forward. Uh, the other part that is there is we've talked a lot about restrooms downtown and needing to get something going. We certainly have the Veterans Group has a restroom initiative. Uh, they got $100,000 from um, uh, uh, Impact uh, that they are planning to put a uh, removable trailer uh, that would work and, and could be moved out because of the due to where it is in the floodplain. Uh, our ability to have something that we can move out in the, the, in the uh, event of an emergency situation. Uh, so they found something, they got the contract for it, uh, but the problem was they don't really have a way to connect it or any funding necessarily to connect it. The city is more than happy to work up to $50,000 um, as we've discussed with them um, in placing that in there. So that's where some of the another funding source of that fun money is. And then the last is opening and maintaining uh, several of the restrooms in the downtown area. I know this has been near and dear to um, Councilwoman Hill and one of her initiatives. And so we have placed uh, 80,000 in there, which that gives us about 480,000 uh, that we are asking council to approve that we are sending uh, based on the meeting on Wednesday. But it takes care of several initiatives that we've been discussing for a long time uh, and where we go from here. Um, I know that Dr. Marbot is going to be back in um, the city this week, and we hope to meet with him. Um, obviously, he's done uh, much of the, the work for the last homeless initiative. Uh, we believe, as we are putting forward some things, that it would be right for us to step up and, again, uh, assert whether those are still there, and we needed to ask him. So he is, uh, he is coming to town. Uh, we're going to have a chance to meet with him this week, and um, and again, we're we're working as we've talked about trying to bring some of those things back to council. We've had some preliminary discussions, but obviously we want to make sure that much of the report that's based off of many of the things we're doing that our report is still valid and the things that we're working with. So those are some of the initiatives that that we're working with at this particular time at the city of Pensacola. The other big thing that has happened is we have um, hired, I guess, back in the end of December, uh, we did bring forward. Uh, Andrew Rothfeder to work with us in in uh, representing the city and dealing with the three um, individuals who have uh, bids for us uh, on the Maritime Park. Uh, we met Friday. Keith, Amy, and I met with Andrew. We are placed together. Uh, I think a fairly good way that we can submit a, um, a counter uh, proposal back to those individuals. And while we're probably about three months behind where we had hoped to be, uh, we are still moving forward. And I, I do expect to have something in the first quarter on that and then moving those initiatives forward. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of great things happening. As I've said before, uh, we're working through all those. Um, uh, you know, that's where we are. Um, obviously, COVID is the biggest situation that continues to face us. Uh, we believe the initiatives that we've taken are very similar to what we did in the summer. And we hope that from our standpoint, we can prevent any spread from our standpoint. Again, the reason we ask your mask, the reason we've cut down on public activities is so that we can keep all of our businesses open. That's our goal. Uh, that's what we're working toward. Um, I want to be real clear. I know last week I saw several comments that were made and, and, and to the governor in the letter that I attributed to that point. At no time in the letter did the city ever ask the governor uh, to make any closures or the expectation. And we asked him uh, to ask local governments in areas to give him plans. And if he didn't like closures, he certainly can work with that. That's never been a part of our plan. Our plan is simply asking for the ability to handle masks in dealing with the mask ordinance. We believe if we have masks, if we have the ability to curtail some public activities, those two things alone, they were successful in driving down numbers in the summer. We believe they can be successful in driving them down in the winter. And we ultimately believe that vaccines will begin to kick into place by this spring and hopefully bring uh, this challenge and, and certainly to an extent uh, our, our ongoing somewhat uh, annual nightmare here dealing with COVID to an end. Uh, we all want to get there to an end um, and we are all moving in that direction. But that's kind of where we are today. I'm happy to answer any of your questions. Please let me know uh, what you have and uh, Casey, give me the questions. Sure. The first question is from John at Studio 850. Governor DeSantis has twice this week pointed out Escambia County for success in a program using faith based groups to provide COVID vaccinations to underserved communities. How can faith based groups in Pensacola join this program and have any vaccination events 
been scheduled in the next several weeks at city faith based facilities. John, John, um, and I, I appreciate that we are working. Those initiatives also came through our hospitals. Uh, we continue to work with those hospitals. They work obviously here in the city of Pensacola. Um, again, uh, from our standpoint, um, it's the distinction we don't necessarily draw one way or the other. We, we've put forward a number of facilities that we believe could be um, available and could be usable. Uh, I think what stops them is not us having them or the ability to work and even get them staffed. I think it's much more supply um, of the vaccine. Um, as that moves forward, uh, our whole goal is to work together, Scambia County, City of Pensacola, uh, City of Pensacola in the City of, of Milton, I mean, uh, the City of uh, Century in the City of Pensacola sent a letter to the Scambia County uh, Commission, as well as we had the uh, City of Gulf Breeze and City of Milton send one to Santa Rosa County. Both those commissions met on Thursday. And again, the major issue is how do we secure a supply for Scambia and Santa Rosa County? It's a team effort. The city's a part of that team. Uh, we will continue to keep working forward and supporting uh, those organizations. At which time we have enough supply, you will see it move down to additional other places. But right now it's working through the health department, the Scambia County Emergency Management and the hospitals. And we are supporting that initiative as much as we can. And we believe when the supply becomes uh, available, we hope to see it um, go to um, go to uh, places as well. Obviously, I know there's a desire also to put it into the private sector. I mean, we certainly would be happy and workable with those things. We're we're agreeable to however uh, they feel the right way. We've placed all of our uh, our sites in there. We believe they're they're well set up to take uh, this kind of thing. But we uh, if the state it chooses to use private um, companies as we move forward, we'll 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 try to work with those decisions. Those are decisions that are going to be made beyond the city's capability, and we are simply here as a partner to help in any way we can. Um, and, and we've made them aware of all the assets that we have and how we can utilize those. So uh, that will be their decision and we'll move forward from there. This is from Jeremy in Weekly. There's a lot of maskless folk out there. Is the city exercising any enforcement or observation measures related to its mask order? Yeah, I, I think um, I think you know at this point the the challenge is the massless folks. Um, we can't. I mean, we can't necessarily do anything, and that, and that was one of the issues. It's there, Jeremy. So I mean, there's not a lot we can do related to that at this particular time. Uh, we have been working with businesses. We continue to work with them. Um, you know, for the most part. Uh, most of the people are working and what we expect them to do is we expect them to have signs up. We expect their employees to be wearing. We realize that at the same time they can't force any individuals anything more than what we can, but we expect them to have their employees. We expect them to have signs up. Um, for the most part that is happening. Uh, there are some repeat offenders and as we're looking forward, we may uh, take some initiatives and, and bring some stuff down that would that would uh, that would target um, some of our repeat offenders that we continue to have and and we will see what we have going forward. But um, I mean, it, we are complying with the law. Um, you know, I, again, I, I wrote a letter last week. Um, I sent it to all of you. Uh, very important in, in the United States that we follow the rule of law. Um, the city, while you may disagree with laws, while you may come on here and, and spread messages and indicate things that you have, and you have the right to disagree with a law, ultimately we have to follow laws, and the city of Pensacola will follow the law. Um, we've made that apparent all over. If we're, if we're going to represent we're a community and a country of a rule of law, then we need to do the same thing. We will observe that law, uh, but within that we will be as creative as we can in how we administer uh, but we we're not going to break the law, so uh, I think that's that's kind of where we are as we move forward. Um, next question. Yeah, this is from Aaron at WKRG. He has a couple of questions about city services. First, should people be concerned with it going virtual and over the phone with city services? Um, do you think this will slow anything down after things were just starting to open back up? And how long do you think this will last? Um, one, no, I don't think it will do anything differently. We did this in the summer and this goes back to the question number two. I think we're better at it. We we know what we did this summer. The fact that we operated all the way really into uh, into into September uh, this way, uh, you know, July, August, September, we had three months of this 
uh, I think we can handle this and I think we can make this work. As far as length of time, our expectation is probably at least two months. Uh, we hope in March we start to see the, the impact of the vaccine. Um, that's certainly what we continue to work with our hospitals. We have another call today with them. Uh, but at this particular time, I think you'll see this uh, looking at two months and, and hopefully ending, uh, you know, our long term um, uh, solution on this is vaccines. And we believe at some point that that is going to make a positive impact on our numbers. And, you know, at this point we've been told and we're looking for um, the first part of March. So I think you'll see this at least um, at least continue for two two months. And we would love to get back open in March and reopen everything up. This is from Laura at WAR. As you mentioned, supply seems to be the main issue around vaccinations right now. As that improves, what would you think about setting up a mega site like some cities and counties are doing, like a stadium, convention center, et cetera? Uh, Laura, I, I appreciate it. We've we've made the um, we've made the city and the state Department of Health and those individuals aware. Um, ultimately, the ultimate decision will be made by the state. They are the ones getting the vaccine and they certainly are working with our health partners. Um, if they choose to do that and we will be in touch with our hospitals and, and you know, I think it will really depend on one, our supply into uh, what ends up happening, what those hospitals and um, in the Florida Department of Health think are the best ways to do it. Um, if they wanted to do Maritime Park, we certainly have that. If they wanted to do, uh, to do community centers and some of the other things, we've we've placed all of those things at, at their uh, disposal so they know. I'm sure the county has probably also turned in the base center. So uh, we have those kind of facilities that have been turned into the state. It really, the d decision will depend on them, uh, the state of Florida through the Department of Health in coordination with uh, Scambia County Emergency uh, Management and the hospitals. They'll make that decision. They're well aware of our assets uh, whenever they feel like they have the right thing going forward at this particular time though. Um, the last phone call we had last week, I mean very much of the discussion was, and this was from the hospitals, we have got to do a good job of securing that. I think uh, I want to I want to say all three hospitals, uh, Baptist, Sacred Heart, and West Florida have done it incredible job when you look at the initiatives at uh, Olive Baptist, when you look at the Milton Community Center, uh, when you look at the partnership for the day that was done at, at um, over over there at uh, Brownsville Community Center, all of these things have done well and they showed exactly and it was great to have the governor in Northwest Florida to show that we can do this. I mean, you know, that, that you don't have to think of just mega cities. It's, it's small cities can also uh, do this incredibly well, incredibly efficiently. Um, and I think we, we, we last week, we really sort of hit a home run on that. Um, so our goal has been just securing supply. Um, at this particular time, we'll continue to focus on that. Once we have that done, we have all of our spaces communicated to them. And if, if they choose to go there, uh, that'll, be a, that'll be a choice made by the Florida Department of Health and the hospitals in conjunction with uh, Escambia County Emergency Management. And we're simply ready to be a part of that team. This is from Jim at the News Journal. Has there been any movement on any of the SCAPE projects? Yeah, uh, Jim, yes. Uh, we are continuing to get forward um, the engineering on all the SCAPE projects. I think as we have the initiatives, as we move forward uh, and finalize out, um, if we have any, any concerns in, in moving forward with the three developments, which are very much hinging on a parking garage. If we have any of those things out there, I, I think our, 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 our last goal is we have a couple of things that we didn't complete. We could not complete in hashtag in Bruce Beach, and we would like to go forward uh, with something and ask uh, Triumph if we can if we could work. So we're trying to figure out what that last uh, ask amount is. I mean, I think it will be considering we're putting in $18.4 million. I think we'll probably be asking uh, for somewhere around $8 million, $9 million, which is well inside of what we're doing. Uh, we're putting the lion's share of our money into it, but we need uh, to get over the top on a couple of these issues. And I think when you look at the jobs created and the things that are happening, um, you know, similar to what Okaloosa County did with that box with their road, 
Uh, we can do that whole box in the in the downtown core area and and, and look at what we've got with jobs. We have a number of uh, initiatives that will take place, and I, I'm confident we're soon going to be bringing a considerable number of jobs. I think I talked to you all last week. Uh, we got two new companies coming in town. Granted, they're small, but they have uh, they have they have good salaries uh, and benefits associated with them. They're sort of also some of our first opportunity into some biomedical stuff. So we're incredibly excited uh, about the opportunities and the conversations that I'm having with people. I continue to think businesses looking going forward uh, between COVID, between um, things that happen, social unrest, even the stuff that happened this past week. I think it's just showing people uh, that they're not sure they want to be in large uh, communities and they're looking for small communities uh, that have good uh, leadership uh, and community efforts uh, working together. I think Pensacola is going to put themselves in a good position as we move forward. As we've always said, if we get out of COVID, uh, we stand to benefit dramatically uh, from this being on the coast, being on the water. I think we 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 really stand to uh, uh, to be a true beneficiary of this. We just got to get through COVID. So we have the initiatives working on the skate projects. I think the last thing that we'll do is trying to figure out where we are with these last three people in the Maritime Park and if there are any other shortfalls and then go forward with a request that we can finalize out all three projects. Um, and, and also, I think we have some port projects that are in there as well. So uh, all these things will bring a significant number of jobs to the downtown waterfront and uh, we're prepared and ready to go forward. But uh, the last piece of that is is getting is getting this um, negotiation done with the three um, individuals on Maritime Park. This question is from Jeremy at M Weekly. I responded to his comment, but I'll ask it for everyone's benefit. Um, is the city closing parks and recreation facilities as well? Uh, we are not closing parks. We have never closed parks, um, even last March. We believe parks are essential uh, to what people need to be doing to maintain good health. We are closing community centers. They're indoor, they're places where people have contact. So uh, I think those are the things we're looking to do. Uh, we believe parks are essential uh, to both our, our physical health and our mental health. Uh, when I look and see our park spaces, when we really haven't seen necessarily things point out that, that there's a big concern with, with spread in our parks, uh, we've seen much more spread in our buildings um, and what's going on within our, our, our homes and businesses across uh, the community. So uh, that's where we stand um, and, uh, and, and we're back to exactly where we were uh, this fall and like I said before we've we've never closed any of our parks um, even back last March we were very adamant uh, that we were keeping parks open um, and that it was essential to our community health uh, both our physical health and our mental health all right we don't have any more questions uh, thank you all again I, I just kind of wanted to quickly say I sent that letter out um, Obviously, the events of last week were, were disturbing in so many different ways. But again, I maintain focus on, on the positive of what we have and the fact that we were able uh, to do the job at hand, come together as a community, and despite the events that happened, move forward and, and get things done without really disturbing our democracy really shows the democratic the strength of the democratic republic that we have in this country and the commitment to the rule of law and the Constitution. Um, I, I think uh, that I walked away with incredibly impressed and in, in seeing the resiliency uh, of our country and our community. And I can assure you that the city, uh, we continue to do that every day. It's it's there's always a balance and we continue to try to work through things, uh, but we we maintain our commitment to the Constitution and the rule of law and we're going to continue to do that. And I think great things are ahead for the city of Pensacola and, and we uh, we look forward to doing that. No press conference next week. We'll see you back in two weeks. Uh, look forward to it at that time. Thank you.